Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I got this to show you. Been wanting to show this to somebody, and so I'm going to show it to you. This is the 21st chapter of the book of Acts. If you haven't taken a look at it, I'm going to advise you to take a look at it. We only got seven verses we're going to look at. We're going to start with verse number seven and end up at number 14. If you think you know, oh, you don't want to watch this, then shut the video off. Go on to something else. Go do something else. This is for the people who are worried, concerned, or care about me. So, the overweight lover, heavy D. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. This is Paul, and this is him heading towards Jerusalem. Okay, notice what it says here. This is Luke writing this. The uh, Luke, the doctor, the physician. The one who wrote the book of Luke. Anyway, he wrote the book of Acts as well. We then completed our verge, voyage to Tyre, and arriving at Palamias, we were greeted by the brothers and stayed one day with them. The next day we left and came to Caesarea, and when we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelizer, who was one of the seven men, well, he's one of the seven men that was mentioned originally in the book of Acts when they were doing the disbursement to the, I don't want to do that, I want to do that. I want to highlight it like that, see? So, brothers, select it for yourselves, seven reputable men. Okay, so he is referring to that. All right, let's continue. And we stayed with him. This man had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. But after we had stayed there for quite a while, for quite a number of days, a prophet named Agabus, Agabus, came down from Judea. Yeah, he traveled all the way from Judea just for this moment. Why? Because Agabus was told to deliver a message. Who told him? He had an understanding. He had an understanding. An understanding. Watch this. And he came to us and took Paul's belt and tied his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, The man to whom this belt belongs will be bound like this, before the Jews in Jerusalem, and they will give him into the hands of the Gentiles or people of the nations. Wait a minute. Agabus just going to come there and wrap his feet and hands with his little belt and say, hey, this man who this belongs to is going to end up like this? And, man, he had an understanding. He was told to do that, and Agabus did what he was told to do. Notice what happens now. Now, when we heard this, let's grow up. Now, when we heard this, both we and those who were there began begging Paul, him, not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing by this weeping and trying to weaken my resolve? Rest assured, I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, when he would not be dissuaded, we stopped objecting and said, Let the will of Jehovah take place. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be bound. I'm going to be chained. I already know this. I've known it in advance. So I don't need anybody worrying about me. I don't need nobody trying to get me out. You must understand this is for my protection. Now, why did Paul go to Jerusalem? Would you like to see? Let's see. Oh, yeah. By the way... This part is going to happen to me later. I want you to pay attention. And immediately he took soldiers and army officers and ran down to them. So they caught sight of the military commander and the soldiers and they stopped beating Paul. That's going to happen later. Are you saying you're going to... No, I'm not saying anything other than I know that I'm going to get my butt kicked in the end. Not now. It's going to be sometime in the future. But it's going to be brutal. I've already been made aware of it. Not running from it. Not afraid of it. I know it's going to happen, but it was given to me. You remember Morpheus when they got off the elevator after seeing the oracle and Neil saw the oracle for the first time? And Neil told Morpheus, would you like to know what she told me? He says, no, what was told to you was for you and for you only. Well, the information that was given to me is for me and me only. This is for my benefit, not for yours. See, what Paul had to do, let's go back. Let's see if I can find it real quick. No, not there. There it is, right here. <sighs> this is what he was told. I was standing by and approving of guards 
guard, uh, guarding the outer garments of the individuals who were stoning Stephen. And yet he said to me, go, because I will send you out to nations far and away. This is what Paul was chosen to do, to talk to the nations. But that's not the only thing Paul was told to do. Hold on. I want to make sure you guys see. Give me a second. Got to get there. No, that's not it either. I just had it. So I just have to find it on a page because is it there? Nope. 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 Hold on. Uh, no, that's the thing about sending in a Caesar. I think it is not there. It's got to be when he's on the boat. So give me a second. And... Not there. Not there. Not there. I think it's going to be this one. Nope, not there either. Where is it? Nope, this is not it. I forgot where it is. It's the part where he lets him know that he, to take courage. Paul was um, in jail, in custody. And he told Paul to take courage. Have no fear. There it is right there. Have no fear, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. This is the 24th verse. And this is, got to find out what chapter. I believe this is 19. Nope, 27. See, way off. He says, have no fear, Paul. You must stand before Caesar, the king. And look, God has granted you all those selling with you. So take courage. And this is Paul speaking now. For I believe God that it will be exactly as I was told. However, you must cast ashore on be cast ashore on some island. Ladies and gentlemen, all I can tell you is it had to happen in that day. It has to happen in this day. All I can tell you is that I know where I'm headed. I'm not afraid because I've known of it in advance. And here's the correlation. Those of you I told. Back in December of last year, I told all of you that the night before, the understanding was, when they knock, answer. Now, do you, do you get that? When they knock, answer? Isn't that like what Morpheus told Neil? Uh, when, I mean, Trinity, she was typing on the computer, and she told Neil, answer the door, and Neil looks up. And then all of a sudden there's a knock at the door and she tells them to follow the yellow the white rabbit. Well, I was just given an understanding. Understanding. Not hearing a voice. Oh, I heard a voice. Yeah, God spoke to me. Please. It's a simple understanding. Now, to prove it, to make sure I'm not crazy, I got up that morning, shaved, showered, brushed my teeth and everything. Put on some clean, tidy whities kidding I don't wear tidy whities but anyway and then I was answering emails my computer was still stuck in the very same spot on the very same email that I had stopped working on when I got my computer back ladies and gentlemen because I did what I was told to do when they knock answer so pay attention today the very same idiot who knocked on the door is the very same idiot who was telling the court that I posted videos about th what's going on and tried to get them to stop me from posting videos because I told you they watched my videos he downloaded the entire YouTube channels Eon 1 and Eon 2 talked about the Eon 1 and Eon 2 and then the judge told the jury that they didn't want them going to my channel and watching the videos because they didn't want to hear me say that when you exercise the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you. So I must exercise that right without giving up the right. So I have to remain silent. I can't even gesture because that is silent speech. Sign language is still speech. So silence is silence. 
that's what I have to do. I have to remain silent. Now, let me tell you what could have happened, ladies and gentlemen. You see, the prosecution rested. She only called one witness. <laughs> she called the idiot who sat up there and was watching the videos. And he knows I know he's an idiot, but he can't do anything about it. See, he thinks that what's about to happen to me, yeah, I'll get mine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not getting mine. This is for my protection. That's why it's happening. That's why it's being allowed to happen. If I violated the law, they're telling everybody that lifetime probation means lifetime. No, it doesn't. 1998 lifetime probation meant 10 years because they can't put you on lifetime probation as a punishment for a crime, especially a high misdemeanor. It's a felony six. The lowest type felony you can have in Arizona is a felony six. So you can't get lifetime probation. You can't get 10 years probation on a felony six. Not back then, but you can now. Remember, probation, according to the, pay attention, probation according to the 1983 sentencing guidelines is a sentence so if you get sentenced once I'm sentencing you to 85 years in prison then pay attention and I'm also sentencing you to probation probation is a sentence you can't be sentenced twice people that's what they do that's why you must sign probation papers agreeing to the contract you can volunteer for servitude that's why I'll always void out their papers you'll see void right next to my name they showed an ID with the word void right at the end I didn't highlight it there's so many things I could have done when the prosecution rested after only calling one witness who doggy when the prosecution rested after calling one witness and the judge told the prosecution where she made mistakes and allowed her outside the presence of the jury to understand what her mistakes were and then called the jury back in. <laughs> Look, if I had not seen it myself, God, it's hilarious. The prosecution does everything and I don't object one time. Okay, but the judge allowed it and she knows she can't do that. And so some of the things she allowed was illegal. And the prosecution did it because they're trying to make me they're trying to get me to say something. They're trying to get me to speak, and I'm not speaking. And so they were trying to say all kind of stuff just to make me, ah, I object. Okay, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the judge told her, well, um, I'll advise you to do this and do this, and maybe you could probably do this. Sh literally coaching her from the stand. You should have, a, no, I shouldn't have. Being silent means being silent. So they called the jury back in and she <laughs> let the idiot be on the stand <laughs> without calling them back to the stand. <laughs> the jury comes back in and he's already sitting in the seat. Excuse me. She's supposed to say, Your Honor, um, I'd like to recall such and such to the stand to clarify something before the jury. Okay, she could have done that, but she didn't. He was already sitting in the seat. That's how much of a game this is so let me help you out people so that you get it don't worry about me I'm okay uh, you know even some of the SATCOM members are talking about well people are gonna want to donate to you and everything for the most part I'm okay I have five hundred dollars in my back pocket okay I've been preparing for this for quite some time I have tons of stamps I've been preparing for this for quite some time I have another hundred nine hundred dollars waiting to be sent to me I've been par preparing for this for quite some time. I'm not going to be spending a thousand, what, thousand four hundred dollars anytime soon. While I'm inside, I'll be changing the name Brett Jones to Eon. I had to wait. That's why I hadn't done it yet. But I was using the usage method in the state of California. The usage method means that I could just start using the name. So I have my credit cards in the name. I have IDs in the name. I did that already. Not to act as an alias, but because Eon is the name. That is my name from this point forward. Those of you who have been calling me Eon, you have done right. Those of you who have been trying to call me Brett or Brett or anything else, well, sometimes people want to do whatever they whatever they want to do, and they don't want to refer to a person by their name. And don't worry about it. There have been some times where people have told me my name is Snooky, my name is U Ubakulu. 
and you know, all kind of other things, and I would object. No, I'm not calling you that. What gives us the right to tell somebody what we are going to or not going to call them? If somebody tells me his name is Glenn, I'm going to call him Glenn. If somebody tells me his name is Derek, I'm going to call him Derek or I'm going to call him D. Somebody tells me his name is Dwayne, I'm going to call him D or I'm going to call him Dwayne. Somebody tells me his name is Tyrone, I'm going to call him Ty or I'm going to call him Ron, I'm going to call him Tyrone. Like Eric Badu said, I better call him Tyrone. Listen to her song. You better call Tyrone. So I'm going to call him Tyrone. Because she told me that's what I have to do. Too many times we call people whatever the f we think we want to call them. We don't have that right, ladies and gentlemen. It's not an option. So I could have sat up there, ladies and gentlemen, and <laughs> I could have said, oh, no, I'm speaking now. I just wanted an arrest their case. This is a strategy. See, they only called one witness. <laughs> they can't call any more witnesses now because they've rested. So while they're resting, let me go ahead and get this mother started. You know what I'm saying? And I could have sat up there and talked about the goddess of Arimathea, the goddess of justice. Justia! I could have. I could have showed them where the motto for the Department of Justice is he who serves the goddess justice. I could have told him about that gold fringe flag that is flying. I could have told him about the March 9, 1933 Act and how it's a military act and how we're in the military jurisdiction, which is why they have that gold fringe flag. I could have done that. I could have told them that, oh no, I have a contract with the government. I could have done that. I could have said, oh, registration. No, I'm not required to do that. No, no, see, my contract ended when they breached the contract, when they were ordered to give me credit for 161 days, and they did not. See, my contract was with them. They failed to do that, which means the contract was breached. Oh, no, or they breached the contract by claiming that I was required to do this, and they held me in jail for this long a time, and then dropped the charges not bringing a case and not allowing me to appeal it or the fact that they did this did that did this and I tried to appeal it and they've not allowed me to do anything see they breached their end of the contract and they want to talk about my being up I could have done all of this but ladies and gentlemen that's not the point I could have said oh no the moment they showed that picture right there I get to show them the context of what they're showing they only showed part of it you can't do that because that's not the truth you're focusing on one part. I have the right to show them the context. And they showed them the contract. And they showed addresses. <laughs> there were seven addresses there. And they only focused on three. And not the other seven. Not the reason why all seven addresses were there. <sighs> then they focused on the name. Didn't talk about the usage act. But... They couldn't talk about the fact that one was trying to hide because when they looked at the name Eon, every account Eon is associated with, Brett Jones is associated with because I did it under that. I could have done it under Eon. I have the ID under Eon. I have the social security number under Eon. I told you I have five social security numbers. I could have done that, but it wasn't for that. And then they want to use my videos against me? I'm not under oath. You can't use this as an admission or non-admission, because I say a whole lot of stuff on here. You know the sky was purple last year? Then it turned orange, then it turned green, then it turned reddish, gellish? I can say whatever I want to on video. You see, that's what they tried to get Alex Jones with, not realizing that he was a radio personality. That's what he was trying to say, and his attorney was correct by having him say that, but not in a child custody matter. But he could say that in a child custody matter, because Al Jones was portraying a character. He created a character called Al Jones. I mean, Al Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, Eon is not a character. Eon is me. Eon is who I am to permanently be. Eon is not a joke. I didn't just create that name just to be creating that name. Pay attention. When you hear the name Eon, you think of one person. Okay? I had to make sure everybody knew. Eon. You think I did a good job? So look, I'm going to go on vacation for a minute. And I'm sorry. By the time I'm released, everything will have changed. Some of you will not be around. Sorry about that. But those of you who are... I promise you, you have my word, 
that I will show you the way out. Hey, what have you got to lose? All you got to do is wait. When you see the next video, subscribe now. There won't be any more videos, probably after tomorrow. I may do one tomorrow. I may not, but there won't be any more videos. So when you see the next video, subscribe now. When you see the next video, then I will let you know that it's time. Okay? For what I understand right now, this will last, and it's probably going to last a year and a half or so. The most they can hold me in there, the most they could, if they could, is a year and a half to a year to eight months. I'm okay with that. I already got the, hold on, let me see if I can put it, put it to you this way. Habeas corpus, all right? And that's the habeas corpus. The appeal, the appeal is going on record tomorrow before there's even any sentencing. Uh, speedy trial right says they have to do the sentencing within 40 days. So within 40 days, there'll be sentencing. I'm not running from this. I want them to go through with this. I want them to play because I can't bring up the issues. This matter involved arbitration. That's why I can't talk people because I got to make sure all of your arbitrations are worth something. Oh, by the way, I just talked to SAA because SAA, SICOM, SACOM, all same house now. Just talked to SAA and I told them we're going to help those people who get arbitration awards. We're going to sit up there and send out. You're going to have to pay for this service. Don't know what the price is going to be. They're going to have to figure that out. Just told them to do it today. Through our organization, which is a partial, it operates partially as a debt collector. Part of its services are debt collections. They will send out the letters for your debt collection. And then we will help you write off the amount on your taxes. Shh! You're going to have to wait. We're not ready for that yet. I just told them that tonight... Okay, because I had to prepare them for what to do next. So believe me, they're on track. I've spoken with several of them today. They know which direction they're headed in. All right, so just work with us. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, let me let you get on with your lives. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I showed you scripture. Some of you don't get it because some of you think the Bible is all of this stuff and religion and all that because you've seen so much and heard so many stupid people say so many stupid things. This, I'm not talking to you about religion. I'm talking to you about Jehovah, the God that I serve, the only true God. Oh, let me show you something else. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got to show this to you because you, you need to know. This is the case right here. See, Henry, Eon, a.k.a. Virgil, they said that <laughs> they said that my documents only have Brett Jones. It doesn't have Eon. Ladies and gentlemen, I did that on purpose because I knew they were going to say stupid things like that. Okay. I do not, and will not, and shall not, and cannot waive a single right. I have the right to a speedy trial and a fair trial, speedy and fair trial, and I'm not getting that. Okay, so the judge sat up there and did 15 minutes worth of rebuttal to this document. It says, I know that we're under the Military Act, known as the March 1933 Act, of which the United States Congress has stated via the National Emergency Act is still extant. It's supposed to be extant, but it's voice recognition. This is an unconstitutional act predicated on by a so-called serious national emergency that the presidential proclamation 2039 is a military proclamation and has been forced on the people without constitutional delegatory authority. With that being said, this judicial officer, this prostitute, this slut, this hoe, this cunt, this however many words you want to call her, that's all she is, tells me that I had better make arrangements for this impromptu scheduling of a quote-unquote trial on Monday the 29th of April 2019. Notice which was given on April 25th, 2019. I believe constitutes an undue surprise. I had better make arrangements? Uh-oh. Okay. This, then this last-minute introduction of discovery. Thousands of pages of information pertaining to current charges possible. But either way, beyond the time frame for which such information and our evidence could be introduced. Then, judicial officer claims she was, she will give me a few hours to review the so-called thousands of pages of discovery. I can't seem to reference and or find any of this in the rules that have been referred to. Okay, so, since this is predicated upon my participation, I choose, 
as it is my choice to not aid and or participate in the defense of the defendant. I had this judicial officer tell me that I was pulling a stunt, that she knew what I was doing when I was talking and asking questions, yet I have been given incomplete answers and misdirected answers to questions no one asked. I would, excuse me, it would be behoven, I didn't say behoven, I said behovent, my word, created it right here, up on my person, yes, I did that on purpose, behoven, that's my word, patented on my person to not aid in the prosecution of the defendant, since it appears that he is without the rights of either having someone speak on his behalf and or having everything he does and or says used against him as unsworn testimony. Yeah, anything the defendant says can and be, will be used against him, yet he's not under oath. Shh, don't tell nobody. This is my favorite paragraph, so bear with me. From this point forward, please do not make any threats. Please do not ask any questions, as any implied suggestions that one has responded by remaining silent, as if such is an acquiescence, would be a violation of due process right, to do, it'd be a violation of the due process right to remain silent. See, if you don't speak, your not speaking cannot be used against you. Do you remember that? If you don't testify, it cannot be used against you. The fact that you don't testify, so my not testifying cannot be used against me. In this instance, silence cannot be construed as an omission and or a non-admission. Not supposed to be omission or non-omission. Anyway, it may only be construed as the exercise of a right. Now, if I'm asked a question on the record, I simply will not answer, since I had better make arrangements. It seemed like a veiled threat that I take and took seriously. That I had better put it in writing after stating it orally seemed like the type of thing one would do to get one to say, Toby, I have not been a person's boy and or nigger and long normally I would say nigger, but for this whole, it's nigger, in a long time. In fact, never. Oh, it appears that there is no recognition of my person, of my having attained the age of the majority. So what did I say next? It appears these proceedings are continuing despite the arbitration agreement, and I'm going to rely on the arbitration agreement because the part between the parties, which agreement, has the parties agreeing to an alternative dispute resolution. Now I'm going to rely on Congress recognizing the American Arbitration Act, otherwise known as the Federal Arbitration Act, was directly applicable to the negotiation process in a criminal matter when enacting pub private law, 11431, December 3rd, 2016. So I choose to rely on the right to due process, the right to compulsory challenge and witness testimony and or production of documents. I challenge the administrative rules being applied to the so-called judicial branch of government proceedings. I challenge the fact that this is not the judicial branch of government, that this is an administrative branch, part of the executive branch as prescribed by the March 9, 1933 Act and Presidential Proclamation 2039, otherwise known as an interim government. This is not sanctioned by the Constitution. It, I will not argue with any about these facts unless they can provide proof with actual facts and conclusions of law con to the contrary I shall not participate and that is final they've been trying to say all kind of things so this is the next thing I said you will make your threats and you will say well if you don't do this then we're gonna do that and so be that uh, excuse me and so be that is your choice but I will not participate one way or the other henceforth. You will follow that with more threats and an attempt to at taking away liberty and or revoking bail, supposed to be bail, or doing something else in violation of the exercise of the right to remain silent. I will not fight you. I will not argue with you. I will make sure you will never have to worry about my tone, because she said I was getting a tone with her when I told her I said no. Anyway, <laughs> so that there will be no misunderstandings. I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I serve the living God, the one who is self-named as well as self-proclaimed, the only true and almighty God, Jehovah, 
whereas you serve the goddess justice. That is your choice, and you want me to participate in inner faith? And I say I choose not. I am strictly prohibited from helping you to worship your god, be Diana, Artemis, Arimathea. It doesn't matter. You, wait, so you will have to pardon me, as such would infringe upon my right to practice my religion of my choice. Ladies and gentlemen, this was my notice of my exercise and my right to remain silent. The aforementioned is, printed under divine, uh, is presented under divine retribution, if not as attested and ascribed and declared as wholly accurate in line with truth, as is the wishes of the accused and of his agent on this April 26, 2019, and the free exercise of his will and or right. Okay, that was how I notified them that I would remain silent. I didn't just say I'm exercising my right to remain silent because they could construe silence to be acquiescence. So I wanted to make sure I put in there that my silence could not be construed as acquiescence. It was just silence. I don't have to answer you. Ladies and gentlemen, they can't force you to answer. They cannot compulse you, compel you, compulsory. They cannot compulse you to testify against yourself. And so... I'm challenging them. So that's what I wanted to share with you all today, so that you know what's going on. And now you know. Okay? I don't have nothing to hide, but let me make sure everybody on this planet knows. My business is not your mother, <clears throat> excuse me, business. This whole, oh, you better do this and you better, do I'm not nobody's child. Well, you got to go do this. I ain't got to go do nothing. That's why I wrote the agreement. You all need to understand. I'm the one who writes agreements. I'm the one who tells people what I'm going to do. They've never told me what I'm going to do. That's why they won't introduce the probation paperwork from PR. But they brought up the Puerto Rico case. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a warrant in Puerto Rico. I've known about it for since 2017 when Francis was in jail. Because her attorney announced it on the record in her federal case. That's how I found out is because the attorney announced it on that record because he went and did a search on me. And so when he told me about it, I'm like, well, they, they haven't told me. Then the appeals court a year and a half later, yeah, the appeals court beginning of the year announced that they were dismissing my appeal because what? There was a warrant and I was a fugitive from justice. Well, how come during this whole case they haven't brought up the fugitive from justice thing? How come they didn't tell the jury that there was a warrant for the arrest of the defendant in this matter? Well, they would have had to explain how the warrants from Puerto Rico are not visible in the United States, and the warrants from the United States are not visible in Puerto Rico as a result of the Jones Act. I didn't. I found that out when I was in Puerto Rico. But I wasn't concerned. And the issue about probation, ladies and gentlemen, that's federal. That's not state. So the warrant would be visible. Talk to me now. Preach to me now, people. So they're playing games. Why do you think I'm telling you now? I couldn't tell you at first because I had to see if they were really playing games. I had to see if this was real. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not real. This is gameplay. Oh, I'll show you what a game is. See, and then they'll do that stupid stuff, but it's okay. I can handle that stupid stuff when the stupid stuff comes. My job is to explain to you all what's going on. If you want to believe it, hey, if there's somebody going to be out there putting up videos and talking about me, let them do it. Don't try to stop them. Because here's the thing. I've told everybody and nobody pays attention to me. The first judge that caused me problems, I told her to stop. She didn't. I told her. I wrote her and I said, everybody who has caused me problems has usually had to suffer. There's always a consequence. Shortly after that, her husband died. No, the consequence wasn't her husband dying. The consequence was her suffering the loss of her husband alone. Okay, it wasn't the death of her husband that was the consequence. It was the not having any comfort during that time. I later told her that I don't have a problem with her. I did explain to them that I tried to warn them. I'm not even going to tell you about the other things that happened to the others. I'm not even going to tell you about the judge that I was dealing with and what happened to him and how bad his life ended up. The first judge. 
In this one, she'll have her own problems. There has to be a penalty. What's the penalty? Well, they don't receive protection. They don't receive the blessings that's supposed to come with helping one of God's servants. Sorry. Jesus said, to the extent you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. So they have to pay for how they treat Christ's brothers. It's just that simple. I, I didn't make up the rule. Okay? I did not make up the rule. So all I do is I let them do what they do. I don't try to stop them. I try to warn them. I try to tell them, hey, you need to stop. What you're doing is wrong. Don't do that. If you touch that, you'll get burned. If you mess with that fool, oh man, I don't know what's going to happen to you. So they deserve everything they get. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to get ready to go to sleep because uh, I've been tired lately. But eventually I'll get my rest. Okay? Take care of yourselves. Do not worry about me. No, they're not going to kill me. My God is not going to let that happen as long as I remain faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's do this. Be found faithful. I'm going to leave you with this because this is all I hope for. I should know where it is readily, but I'm tired and I can't think straight right now. Too much on my mind. Been talking about too much. Okay. This is the first of Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse two. In this regard, what is expected in a steward, a servant, is that they be found faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just trying to remain faithful. I don't care about anything else. Why? But by this I am not proved righteous. The one who examines me is Jehovah. Okay? This is who I am trying to be found faithful by. I don't care what man thinks of me. They can call me whatever they want, ladies and gentlemen. They can say whatever they want to about me. I don't have to defend myself. He is supposed to be my shield, my guard, my sword, my arm, my strength, my rock, my king, my lord. He is supposed to be all of that. So I don't care what people say. I know, I know everybody else, but, but you shouldn't do this. Ladies and gentlemen, I knew about it in advance. I had time to prepare for it. You just did, and I tried to tell you all this was coming. But now that it's here, do not worry. All right, this video is up here for prosperity. It's just going to be what's about to happen, so that all of you know. Have a good day, everyone. We'll talk later. There may be another video after this, but I can't promise you. Okay? All right, take care, everyone. Goodbye.